All right, so here, obviously, I make it look so easy. My code always works, and my examples are on point, and then with uh, different people, not, not exactly. Now, here's the perfect time to then bring up the debugging method, figuring out what are the bugs of my app. And here's when we run into two possibilities, syntax errors and logic errors. Syntax errors are relatively easy to figure out because we'll get some feedback that says error on line 17. Logic errors might not produce any errors, and we have to figure it out somehow. And this does take practice and experience. If you have any practice or experience on any programming language, this helps you, because then you can think like the dumb old computer, which doesn't know anything until you program it to do something. So we have an idea of what we want this to do. It's not doing it, and I'm not getting any syntax errors. Then we probably have a logic error to try to muddle through. So let's say that my project is working properly and then what I've done is I've gone through talk to emulate Android and so here's how I would show you how to debug this I've shown several people at the moment but let me show you what what I mean by debugging this will work either on a real device or a virtual device um, where we can uh, use Google Chrome to get console output. Uh, remember, please mute your devices. I still keep hearing them. You have a volume button. Just press it down a few times. So we can use Google Chrome to debug our devices so we can see console output. And that's what we're going to need to figure out if our JavaScript is working or not. So let me get this loaded and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to run it on a virtual device. And this will work just fine on a virtual device or a real device to do this debugging. The debugging is part of the Chrome tools. I've got Chrome open right here. It's kind of cumbersome, though. So the way I would do it, and I do have it on one of the handouts. I'm not making it up on the spot. It's in the handout. Um, it's a little cumbersome, so what I'll do is I'll open just a brand new blank tab and press F12 on the keyboard. So hit F12 on the keyboard. Remember these, these uh, developer tools. This is built into Chrome, it's built into all the browsers, but this only works on Chrome. Okay, I've got my uh, project loaded in my virtual device. I click beep, nothing happens. So here's how you debug it. I'm in Chrome, I did F12, and then on the top right corner, remember we have these three dots. Customize and control dev tools. Click the three dots. You should see more tools, inspect devices. We can inspect a virtual device as well. So click more tools and then inspect devices. And I notice for you guys, your screen then here looks a little different than mine. Actually, mine looks the same as yours now. I guess it updated. You get a pop-up that then in my case says, my Moto E is connected as well as a virtual device. Android SDK built for x86, the virtual device. I've got my virtual device running. It's not behaving. In this device, inspect device here, you click on the device you want to inspect. Notice it highlights here. It's so subtle, but that one's highlighted. If I clicked on my real device, that one gets highlighted. You see that? It should actually highlight it, not just put a little line there. But um, you have the virtual device selected right there. My, in my case, it says it's running two apps. Earlier in the day, I ran Hello Taco, my test app, io.taco.hello. I'm ignoring that. Here's my current project, my SDCE. There's my package ID that I'm expecting. There's my app running right now. I click Inspect. Gives me another window, bunch of stuff. You want to switch over to the console tab. So once I get used to this procedure, this will be very, very useful and quick in that, did I write my code properly? I can check it in the Google Chrome console here. Mine does say Cordova is ready. If my code were completely broken, that wouldn't even show up. Because the thing about JavaScript is that you have 99 lines of code running perfectly, but now line 100 is wrong, it deactivates all 99 lines. So whenever one little thing goes wrong in JavaScript, everything suddenly deactivates. 
I would not see Cordova is ready if I had a syntax error. My Codica code so far is 44 lines. If I had one thing wrong somewhere here, if I misspelled function over here with a Y, everything would break, even though everything worked. And that console output would tell me on the side here, in your Codica file, line 37, check out that line. Mine says line 8. If I had an error, it would say, it would say missing parentheses, missing parentheses in your Codica.js file, line 17. That's the whole point of this thing, for it to give you feedback about where to look in your code to see what's wrong. Mine is not giving me any error messages. Mine is saying Cordova is ready. Unfortunately, then, it's not a syntax error, it's a logic error. If my code were really broken, that would never pop up, because all my code would deactivate and that would never have a chance to load up. Line 8 would never load up because Cordova is not ready, something's broken, so that line would not appear. Syntax error. This is the harder one to figure out. So, the way I would try to debug this then is, Okay, it's not my syntax, my code is written properly. Let me go back to the last thing that I wrote, double check that spelling. Then I'll go back to the second last thing that I wrote, check that spelling. Oh, I made a mistake, let me fix it, let me run it. Hopefully it's that easy to do, that it's your last bit of code that you wrote or your second last bit. The last bit of code that I wrote was right here in my JavaScript file, this whole navigator notification stuff, BTN feedback, on click, okay, that seems to be okay. The, la the second to last bit of code that I wrote was in the HTML file. Let me look at the HTML file. Poking around here, I wrote, okay, data roll, beep, I don't know, I can't find my error. I, I thought I wrote it all properly. Did I? Anyone have an eagle eye? Dot. Dot. BTN dot feedback. My JavaScript code says, look for something called pound btn feedback. Whoops, in my HTML, I wrote something wrong. I wrote it as btn.feedback. Not to pick on anyone in particular, but for other people, I saw that you did this also. I wrote all my code. My, my HTML code is fine. Just like the instructor, id equals btn feedback. My JavaScript, I wrote it just like the instructor. <coughs> but it's not working. Anyone have an eagle eye there? It's the hashtag for the ID. The hash mark, the hashtag. I missed the pound sign right there. You write the pound sign shorthand in HTML as ID equals, but then you write the pound sign as an actual pound sign right here. Find the thing in our document named ID BTN feedback. That did not create any syntax errors. That is not wrong. The logic of it is there's no such thing in my document called BTN dot feedback. There's no such thing in my document called BTN feedback it's pound BTN feedback. That was my mistake in this case. And then unfortunately my console wasn't too much of a help. At the very least it told me my general code seems to work because I got Cordova is ready, but then I have to backtrack all my code and figure out what I did wrong or call the instructor to help you. But I'm not going to always be there. So you have to remember to use this console, the, the, cord, uh, the Google Chrome console. This doesn't work on Firefox. This doesn't work on Safari, Internet Explorer. It only works on Google Chrome. Google Chrome is a Google product. Android is a Google product. No wonder it works. Firefox is not a Google product. Firefox is a Mozilla product. Safari is an Apple product. No wonder they don't work. So you have to use Google Chrome. Question? When you um, choose to inspect it, uh, how do you are able to see uh, what you're touching on the screen? That's going to depend on your particular device, if it's compatible or not. My device is compatible, and I won't quite know it until I try it. But here's my real device there, and um, my real device is that XT whatever. 
and then the device, the app is right there, my STCE, and I click inspect. If my device is compatible, it will show up there. If it's not compatible, it just won't show up. Question? If you're not getting the inspect box on the right, what's um, so just to confirm, you first pressed F12 okay. to get this to pop up. You're clicking the three dots, yep. and then you've gone to more tools, inspect. Yep. Okay, if you're not getting the inspect, that could be another indicator. Well, also check. The device is highlighted. You see the little line next yes. to it? Yep. And if you're further still not getting inspect, unfortunately, then another reason, another possibility that your device is not compatible not compatible with this inspector. It will be compatible with monitor. Remember the handout that I have about going to, to load monitor.bat. That's another way to look at the console feedback. So if Chrome isn't compatible with your device, you still have the monitor. So this debugging, it's going to vary for a bunch of us because some of us have real devices, some have virtual devices, some of have real devices that are compatible, some have virtual real devices that are not compatible. So make sure you call me over to see how we can figure it out for you. But um, that's our process, figuring it out. Is it a syntax error? Is it a logic error? Syntax errors are a little easier to fix because it'll say missing curly brace, unexpected semicolon, uh, you know, not found, object not found, and such. Logic errors are the hard ones because later on when we get complex, someone puts in their name, is it the right name or the right password, we have to check if-else statements and such. Logic errors could come into that. In any event, it's a little sidebar on debugging. What I want to do is, we'll go back, we'll do one more thing with this notification, then we'll do the camera. Uh, notification, we had it beep, we had to make up an alert pop-up. The other thing that we can do is ask for feedback, like a, uh, or ask for information, like a username. Let's see how that works. That one is specifically the one called prompt. We have alert, confirm, prompt. Prompt will make a pop-up, which will prompt you for info. So if we scroll down to find the section of prompt, displays a native dialog box that is more customizable than the browser's prompt. We've got navigator.notification.prompt, same as before. We've got a message, which is required, a callback, which is required, and then three optional items. A title at the top of the box, labels for our buttons, and here we can have more than one button, as we'll see, and then default text. This will ask, for example, log in, and a little box for the person to put in their username. If we want that username automatically filled in with default text, that's how we set default text. So message, prompt, title, button, labels. Array of <coughs> strings specify button labels, which is optional. Defaults to OK, cancel, OK or cancel. We can make it say yes, no, we can make it say different things. Yes? So the default text would be basically like username or ID or whatever you Exactly. If we want to guide them to write an email here, we can write an email, a generic email, john at example.com, to guide them to write that. The default is empty. That needs a callback as well. And notice the, the trick here is that you can have three buttons, and the prompt callback will take in a value of the button, either button one, two, or three. And unfortunately, note that the index used are one based indexing, so it is one, two, three. Previously, we've dealt about working with something in an array, and we had 0, 1, 2, 3. We started from 0 on a, on a plain old array. For some reason, this one starts off on 1. 1 is 1. The first button is 1, not 0. 
You hardly see that, but this is one of the times you'll have to remember that, or look it up in the manual. Example. Navigator down notification prompt. Text, please enter your name. On prompt, call that after you press one of these buttons. At the top of the box, it'll say registration. Your buttons will say OK and exit instead of OK and cancel. It will automatically fill <coughs> into the box temporarily Jane Doe. When someone clicks either OK or exit, it will then run on prompt up there. And then on on prompt, we pass a result. The result will either be one or two, not OK or exit. It'll be one or two. And what will pop up, just to show you that this works, it'll pop up with, it'll say, you selected the button number, result.button index, number one or number two. It'll pop up. With that, I can then get much more complex that says, <clears throat> if someone clicked OK, which is number one, if I see that number one was selected, do this. If I see that number two was selected, do that. <laughs> So that's how this prompt <coughs> that's how this prompt works. Let's say we um, let's say we want to do this ourselves. In our case, let's only take well, I guess to make it obvious. Let's take the whole, let's borrow that whole example code again. Everything from function down to that curly brace, or that uh, semicolon. Copy that from, from the example. And we'll do the same thing here in that we um, will copy this and paste it into our code. Copy that. We'll go back to Notepad. Back to our Codica file, our JavaScript file. We need to al also add this onto our device ready. Uh, I'm just going to put it at the very end here. Um, right to orient ourselves, we've got function get feedback. We've got function alert dismissed. That function ends there. And then the whole on device ready ends. Give yourself a new line before on device ready ends, line 35 in my case. Give yourself a new line 35. Make sure you are after the function of alert. Make sure you've got a curly brace there, nothing, and then only one curly brace. If you've suddenly got two curly braces there, you're, you might be up here or something. So I'm going to paste at that point. And unfortunately, what I see is that when I paste this in, the alignment gets all weird. I do recommend to take a moment to align this and tab this properly, because then this gets really messy looking and weird. And here's a trick. If you select, if you highlight and select all of these lines of code which are not indented properly, if you select them all and tab, they all indent together. You don't have to indent line by line by line. Select a bunch of lines, press tab, and they all indent together. See that? These lines were way too far to the left. Just for readability, I don't like that. So select them all. Tab those over. So this will make a pop-up happen asking to enter the name. Notice what we've done here. It's in the ice, it's in the on device ready function. But it's not triggered by any button. It's triggered by on device ready, which means as soon as the app loads, it will ask you to put in your name. If we had instead put this navigator.notification inside of get feedback for example this would not be triggered until someone clicked the button to invoke get feedback i'm showing 
to do this a couple of ways. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Maybe you want that as soon as someone downloads your amazing app, that it pops up. Please give us a name. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't want the name to be asked until someone actually, you know, checks out the app and tries to save something, let's say. So you want to think about what triggers what. In our case, we're doing it that this code is out by itself. This code will run as soon as on device ready is ready. As soon as on device ready is is fired. Uh, we don't need to do anything special here. Save it and run it. Make sure all your code is saved. Go to File, Save All. I'm going to run this in my virtual device so you can see something on screen. Taco Emulate Android. While I'm waiting for it to load, I like to go back to the home screen so that I know that it's loading the latest version. So I either run this on a real device or virtual device. And if you haven't done so yet, again, please mute your devices. And what should happen here is as soon as the device is ready, it will ask for a prompt. It will ask for your, please enter your name. When you put in a name and you click OK or exit, you'll get a basic pop-up that happens that says you clicked on this button, number one or number two or number three or whatever, if you have more than one button. So if this works, when mine pops up eventually, the concept of this is to perhaps make some kind of app where you can uh, do user accounts. The way we'll use this a little bit later is to ask for a user um, for, their, for the person's name so that we can customize the app. We'll ask for the person's name and then it will let us put their name throughout the app. So anyway, here it is. As soon as on device ready fires, navigator.notification prompt. At the very top, it says registration because we've said here up on the title, notice there's some comments that they added uh, for us so that we know what each of these lines are. Registration. Please use, mute your device if you haven't done so yet. And then after that, we get please enter your name, which is right here. Please enter your name. And then it's automatically filled in with Jane Doe, and I can put in my own name. On the keyboard, I can actually, I should be able to actually write with my computer keyboard here. I don't have to click the buttons. Let's say, you know, John Smith. And I have exit or OK. Notice what I've got here. OK and exit. I believe in the documentation that it says that there's a quirk that these numbers are reversed. It says OK first and it says exit second. But visually, it's exit first and OK second. I'm going to click OK. Pops up alert. You selected button number one and entered John Smith. Well, look how it did that. <laughs> After I click OK or exit, it'll then run on prompt. On prompt is right here, on prompt. And it's capturing some result. That's the purpose of, of these callbacks oftentimes. Make it do something and then do something else with those results. We're passing in some result. Prompt will do something and pass those results into on prompt. On prompt is defined here. On prompt is taking the results. Make a pop up. You selected button number result dot button index. Each one of these fields has a built-in name. This field here is called button index. So from the result, check what the button index is and show it on screen. Furthermore, with the plus and entered results.input1. 
input one is right here, where the person typed in a name. That's the input one. Show the name that the person typed on the screen. That's exactly what my emulator then is saying. You click button one, and you typed in that name. Since I didn't link this to any button, I can't trigger that again. If I had linked this to a button and I click log in, I could make that pop up over and over to show another name and other names. I have to run the app again to make it load up again because it this will only activate on on device ready. <coughs> Um, if you instead click the exit button, let's say you're gonna you accidentally logged in, and you click the exit button, it'll pop up to say you pressed button two, one and two. And if you didn't type anything there, I think it'll be empty or say null or something. If you didn't type in a name, I'm not sure. I'll <coughs> see in a moment. If I don't type anything, there's some result, which I'll see when I reload this. So even on my virtual or real device, for me, it takes a little while to load up. Remember, we can use browser. Taco run browser. That loads up the web browser, which might be a much faster way. OK, so this time, I'm not going to type anything. And I'll press exit. Alert. You selected button number two and entered Jane Doe. So it seems to take the value of whatever default that is and displays it. I clicked exit, which was button two. One, two. So no placeholder. The placeholder text is, is right there. Jane Doe, default text. That's the placeholder text. I can put an email there. I can put a phone number, whatever it's. Hmm. Yeah, we can put it blank. We can leave it empty like that, blank, and it'll just be blank. The document, it'll probably say no. Exactly, it'll probably say, well, maybe not. It'll probably be, it'll probably be empty, but not no. The documentation will probably explain it. And notice that that default text is optional. Default text, it's in brackets, means optional. Default text box input value, which is a string optional. Default empty string. If we don't put anything, it'll just be empty. Not no. We must comma, comma, just leave it, you know, disappear. Exactly. Not even put anything there. Not even put anything there, but we have to remove the final comma. Because that's now the last thing. This parameter, this parameter, comma, this parameter, comma, no more parameters, no comma. But if we do have that final parameter, we do need the comma. So again, the purpose of these plugins are to give us bits and pieces of how to create an app. It's still up to you to decide what kind of app you're trying to create, and it's up to you to decide what um, features you need. These that are that are in the documentation of these that are in the documentation of the uh, of Cordova are the official ones. These 19 apps are the official ones that you can access. Uh, there's nothing listed here about barcode scanner, Bluetooth and such. Uh, we'll, we'll do the camera in just a moment, but um, any general questions at this point? Not specific. My code doesn't work, but any general questions at this point? Yes. I have a very basic question. I'll ask you later. I'll be looking at my computer. Sorry. Okay, sure. Any other general questions here? Okay, so we're seeing some sort of trigger does something else. Um, we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do the camera now. Now, when you set up your virtual device, remember, if you set up a virtual device, there was a field where you needed to select a camera. 
either emulated or webcam. If you're doing this on your own computer and you have a camera, this will work the best because your app on the virtual device will tap into the camera to fully test it. But if you don't have a camera, like on your computers, you should have selected emulated and it'll just do a very generic sort of camera shot. So this, what we're about to do, will be much more impressive on a real device with a real camera. Under the plugins here, let's go to camera. How can we make our app take photos? Let's go to camera. This plugin defines a global object which provides an API or a way for taking pictures and for choosing images from the system's image library. So I can take a photo or have the user load a photo from their camera roll. I suppose conceivably the way we could use camera is eventually on our SDC app we're gonna set this up so that a person can save a class schedule. That's how the database will tie in. They're gonna save a class schedule. I suppose what we could do is also have themselves save a selfie as well. Mm -hmm. How happy they are at the beginning of the semester and how less happy they are at the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. Taking a photo and saving it to the database. That's how we could use the camera. Notice we could instead have the user load a photo that they took with some other photo app. Let's say I took a photo via Instagram, and then I want to load that photo because it's got a cool filter onto my, into my database. Installation, we, we know about that. Deprecated version, don't do that one. Uh, another one here, unstable, don't do that one. How to contribute, found an issue. This one is because it's a very popular and powerful plugin that's a little bit more detail about, did you find any errors and problems? Uh, submit submit bugs and such and help us fix it. Uh, this one's more complex. It has many more commands. We have camera and camera. One is get a picture um, and one is you know, one is take a picture and one is load a picture and then other other options here. Um, Do you know if it's possible to have it save the picture as your screensaver? Not this way. That's much more complex because that's tying into deeper levels of the operating system in the settings. There might be a way. We can easily research it and find out, but to my knowledge, this shouldn't let you do that because that taps into do too deeply into the operating system. So we've got basically camera dot get picture. That's how we take a photo. It's a little bit of JavaScript. Notice how it's spelled dot get picture. And it's made out of a couple of um, three parameters, success callback, error callback, and options. Notice the syntax, unfortunately, on this screen is slightly different than we saw on the other screens where the options were in brackets because this is a global effort of everyone working on this, and I guess someone put, forgot to put the brackets. So there's options. Takes a photo using the camera or retrieves a photo from the device's gallery. The image is passed to the success callback as a base64 encoded string or as a URI to the image file. So basically, you take a photo and it will pass the raw data of the picture because anything uh, Deep down is just code, even a picture is code, so it'll pass the raw code of the picture into your app, or it will pass the address of where your picture is saved on your memory card. That has a path as well. The SD card on my device has a path that I can access, so I can load a picture from my device. It goes on to say you use this command and it will open the device's default camera. So whatever camera is app is on the device, it'll open up and then it'll have the, the built-in take photo, reverse the camera, load photo, whatever. 
um, goes on to give you more details. The return van, oh, well, the, there's a source. Also, it's going to be either that you're going to, t the source of the photo is going to be the actual camera, the sensor, or it's going to be the photo library. So it's going to be the memory card, either from the sensor or from the memory card. It will then either, yes, load the photo, or no, load the photo. This will have two callbacks, whereas the previous one had one callback. This can have two possibilities success photo, fail photo. You can do whatever you want with the encoded image. You can then render the image, you can display the image in the image tag, like the example shows us. You can save the picture either in the memory card or in other ways such as local storage, or you can post the data to a remote server. You can take that data, the raw data of the photo, and save it off to a server. So then this goes on to say you know, this could take very high quality photos. So we have an option of quality, medium quality photo, low quality photo, etc. It works on all the platforms basically. More examples here. Here's the example. We got camera cleanup. I'm going to skip that for the moment. Camera error, camera success. Example, camera options. So here it lists a bunch of the options that we could use. The quality of the photo from 1 to 100 or 0 to 100. Destination type. Um, source. Is it editable? Save it as a JPEG or other formats. Target width and height. Orientation, save it to the photo. Now, notice some of these. Okay, if you use the quality option, it accepts a number type, and a number are whole numbers, not fractions. You could also have a Boolean. A Boolean is basically true or false. Allow edit, true or false. Boolean. So notice down here where it says where it says save to photo album. Take a photo and save it to the to the camera to the device's SD card. The default seems to be false. So when you take the photo through your app, it's going to display it in your app. When you exit the app, it goes away. It didn't save it anywhere in the memory card by default. If we add the extra option, it will also save it will also save the photo to the device's memory card. So it goes on to a lot of detail about which each one of these things means, destination type, encoding type, we have options of JPEG or ping. Looks like we can also do video, etc. So this, this can be very wordy. How do you actually use it? Eventually it goes on to give you examples. What we're going to do is scroll down to get to the part. It's, it's a little counterintuitive. Uh, but we're going to scroll down to get to the part that says get camera get picture areta. Here's a, here's a complete example. These things also are up on higher parts over there, but uh, the complete example is right here. I'm not exactly sure why they put it under Aretta, which usually means there's mistakes. Use this one instead. <coughs> but if we break down what we've got here, this is still not complete because there's no trigger for this. There's no button to press to take the photo. This is, here's the code, do with it what you will. We're going to make a button and we're going to make a function so that when someone clicks the button, it then does navigator.camera.getPicture. That's the basic code to take a photo. It has on success callback required, which will deal with what happens when we get the photo. It has on fail callback, which deals with what happens when we can't get the photo. Those two are required. 
These two can be named anything. They chose to call it here on success and on fail because then they are defined over here, function on success, function on fail. These are not reserved JavaScript commands. These are invented. We could have called this, when I write my own app later, I could call this got picture, didn't get picture. Function, got picture, function, didn't get picture. Doesn't matter what they're called, follow the examples to avoid the most confusion. But sometimes you see an example that uses these words and someone else wrote a tutorial with slightly different words. The point is that you know that get picture has success, fail, and options. Options are listed here in curly brackets because we are listing more than one and that's also not quite intuitive because we've seen square brackets elsewhere. Square brackets to define the OK button, the exit button, etc. Here it's in curly braces because it's in JSON format, JavaScript object notation. We'll talk about JSON later. The point is that we've got curly braces, quality, colon, 50, from 0 to 100. So it's medium quality, photo, comma, destination type, camera, destination, data. Give me the raw data of the photo. <coughs> We can instead have a data URL, I think on top it says something like data URI, which says give me the, the path to the photo stored on the camera. And it's not listed here, but we'll add it later. We want to add another option where take the photo and save it to the memory card. So we'd have to go back here and see how do I set this up to also save it to the memory card. So this is just to try to get the photo. Let's say we got the photo. It worked. It goes to on success. When this works, it passes image data into on success. <coughs> In this case, it's saying there's going to be some placeholder, some placeholder in the HTML. There's some placeholder on the HTML called <coughs> my image. Let's reference it here. And then we're going to do image.source equals display the image data on screen. If we are not able to pull up the, to, if we are not able to take a photo, then it will go to on fail. And it will simply say alert pop up failed because in whatever message this kicks back to it. <coughs> this has image data come from. Image data comes from get picture. The result of get picture is some image data. And that is automatically sent either to on success or on fail. So the confusing thing, this could be called image data and this could be called image data. It doesn't really matter. But we call the two different things, message and image data. So that comes just automatically out of get picture. There's another example over here. If you want to load a picture from the memory card, okay, so here's the example. If you want to load it from the memory card, it looks almost the same, but it's got camera, the option, camera.destinationType.fileURI. Give me instead the path to the picture. Instead of take a picture, give me the data from the camera sensor. All right, let's see if we can get this to work. I'm going to take this first example, copy this whole chunk of code. Copy that whole chunk of code. We'll go back to Notepad. We'll go to the... JavaScript file first. Still in the on device ready function, so on mine it's about line 46. Curly brace closes the whole on device on device ready function. That parenthesis closes the prompt. So after the parenthesis, give yourself a new line right there. Paste all of this code that we got. It's all out of alignment, so I'm going to take a moment to indent it a little. So 
So just paste it in all of the code of the example. On its own, on its own, this works, but not exactly how I want. I want a button to click on to take a photo whenever I want. At the moment, this will load the app, and after it asks for your name, right away asks you to take a photo. And you will not be able to get back to take another photo unless you restart the app. So that means I'm going to put the navigator.camera object into a function that I can reuse over and over. So I'm going to back up before navigator.camera and make myself a new line above that and write function take photo. We'll, we'll use actually btn take photo. We're going to have some button that will be clicked on to take a photo. Open close parentheses, open close curly brace, I want to get navigator.camera into those curly braces. I did it like this to show you. You can easily get lost. Watch here a moment. I'm going to move the navigator stuff tabbed a little bit and then move that curly brace down here. So that ending curly brace, I moved it after the navigator.camera. Don't forget it's closing elements. Don't simply write another curly brace there. I did not do that. I moved the curly brace from there to there. Don't type another one, then you get a syntax error. Two curly braces. That's correct. Start curly brace and curly brace. You better have one highlighted and its pair closing here. If they both close up there, wrong. You want to have curly brace, curly brace. That's all for your function btn take photo. So now we have the ability to take the photo many times. It's in a function. The function will not be triggered until you click a button. Well, we need to then set this up so that we click a button, take a photo. We've got an example of that, about that already on top here. Line 17 says, click a button, get the address. <coughs> click a button, get feedback. I, I'm missing this jQuery selector. I have take photo, but I don't have any way to, to trigger it yet. So I'm going to create a new line above that. And I'll do the syntax of jQuery. Write the jQuery selector so I can select something on my app. And after I trigger it somehow, run the button take photo function. In quotes, pound btn take photo, which I just saw, I made a little mistake here. The button itself, I'm going to call btn take photo. I shouldn't have called the function btn take photo. That might cause problems. So sorry about that. Go back to where you wrote btn take photo for the function, and we'll call that get take photo. Again, I'm making this up right now. I'm not, there's no special naming structure, there's no reserved commands, I'm making this up for it to work for me. So I didn't think ahead a bit, and I was about to name this, name two things the same thing, which could cause problems. So I'm just following my own rules that I made up earlier, which is that something up here is called btn feedback, and then later on that invokes get feedback. I have btn URL, and I do 
and it invokes get URL. I just made up that, that style. That's part of my style guide. I just made it up. So this is what I've got here, further in my own syntax, my own style. Some button will have btn take photo ID attached to it. When someone clicks on that, it'll invoke get take photo. Don't forget the pound symbol. And yes, at the moment, there is no button that exists anywhere in my code that will trigger this. That's something I need to do. In the on quotes click comma space function curly uh, parentheses curly braces same syntax as before how do I complete this line here put get take photo and into function curly braces, yes. So in the curly braces, get take photo. Open close parentheses. I, I did use parentheses there because it's not the same as we've got up here for on, on prompt. It's just the way it is. Usually when it's a callback, you don't put the parentheses. But when it is defined like this, after a trigger, I have the parentheses. I'm not done yet because what I've got here is that I'm saying there's a button somewhere in my app that when I click it, it takes a photo. That button doesn't exist yet. We need to uh, create that button. And secondly, if you recall here, there's some placeholder to display my image. I need to create that placeholder too. So I need to create this button and I need to create this placeholder. So that example should be further explained upon. I'm going to save my JS file and go over to the HTML file. And just so that it works, I'm going to add another button very basically below my beep button. Line 62 or so in the HTML file, I need another button to take a photo. I will call this camera. It needs an A tag. So just like the beep button, I'm going to create something very, very similar to that. I need href, data role, and ID. And so, I already know that href will be the same where it just goes to the pound symbol, data role, button, so that it looks like a button, and id, btn, what did I call it? Get photo? btn get photo? Take photo. Take photo. Yeah. See, always remember your own code. Or copy and paste. BTN take photo. So now I've got a button that once I click it, the JavaScript will kick in. It will do navigator.getphoto. If it takes a photo properly, it will display it on screen. I don't have a placeholder for that yet. <clears throat> I'll just put it down here right after the camera button. Image tag. src equals nothing. We don't have any, any we don't have any picture to display yet. But we need an ID there. And the example code has my image. The example code is going to look for something on screen that has an ID of my image. When it finds it, it will then take the data from the camera sensor and fill in the source.
to confirm. We've got a button called BTN Take Photo. Once we click it, we invoke Take Photo, Get Take Photo. Notice uh, this also, I mentioned it before, but you should be used to this. If you double click something in Notepad, it will highlight all instances of it. This is also a way to debug yourself, because if I had said Get Take Photos, and I highlight Get Take Photos, it's not seeing that function. I called it up here, get take photos, but I could find it here as get take photo. Syntax error, perhaps, or logic error, actually. So I might not even get a pop. I will get an error on this because it'll say there's no such thing as get photos, and it'll guide me to that. So the point of this is if you highlight something in Notepad, it'll show you all instances of it throughout your code. That way, when I've got this highlighted, okay, I know that when I click on it, it's going to load this. Unfortunately, it's not case sensitive. I have a false sense of security that this will work. It highlighted them both. The instructor said when you highlight them, it tells you that it's both of them and it'll work. Again, it's not case sensitive, unfortunately. This highlighted both lowercase p, uppercase p, but that will not work if I run it because JavaScript will look for something called get take photo with capitals. And I've said run a function called get take photo with only t capital. It will not find the function called get take photo with capitals. So be careful there. Just because it highlights it doesn't actually mean it's fully correct. I think at this point we probably have our code right. Let's see here. Again, this will work the best if you run this on a real device. I'm going to run it on my virtual device first and see what happens. We'll take a break in just a moment to see if our code works. I'll put my code in the network folder in just a moment. But I want to see if my code works so far before I give it to you. Has anyone uh, progressed far enough to see if it works? Yeah. Great. You got a picture? Great. Let's see mine. So. I'm going to pull it back to the home screen here, wait for this to emulate. Again, this is most impressive on a real device. It'll take a photo of your neighbor and it'll show up right in your app. So you need to get a, re a release signed. <laughs> to use your image in perpetuity. To use your likeness in all manners, known and unknown. Now, spoiler alert, when we load this up, it won't exactly look great. Your photo will be huge. We never define the size of the photo. So you'll get a huge photo in your app. We haven't scaled it yet, so we'll do that, of course. Uh, but I'm showing you this is the process. We write code, we debug code, we test it, we see how it works. Does it work? Does it not work? Okay, it's asking for a name, whatever. Just click OK, whatever. And then we didn't define where it goes, so it's like, it ain't going anywhere. Right? It Copy should it. have. Let me check right now. But I've got my virtual camera, so here you'll see a wild green square running around. You take a photo with your virtual camera. Then it says, retake the photo, or cancel, retake the photo, accept the photo. I'm going to say I, I accept the photo, so I click that. This will take it back to my app. There's my photo in my app. I'm going to do camera again, and then this time I'm going to cancel it. Failed because camera canceled. There was the on fail callback. I'm going to take another photo. I'm going to this time take it when green. I took a second one and the app crashed. <laughs> Let's see if mine crashes. I'm going to take a second photo, check mark, and put in the green one. I never got that on the app. We'll check uh, people's code in just a moment, but most likely the reason it didn't show up is because on your index, HTML, you, you check that your image source has an ID of my image. So I'm going to try this on my real device. So 
So if you're using a real device, however you take a photo on your real device, so everyone in the back, Larry and Larry. Uh, so if you're using your own real device, um, however you take a photo on your device, on mine I have to tap the screen that takes the photo, however your device is. You take a photo, you have canceled, you have a accept, and then it should load it up on the device. We'll take a break in just a moment and then we'll further refine this. But if this works, this is very cool. This now has the ability to take a photo. You have now an app that can take a photo. What you do with it is up to you. At the moment, we haven't set a parameter of saving the photo anywhere. As soon as you exit the app, the, the photo could go away. It's in the ether. We didn't set anything about saving it also in the camera roll or anything like that. But I have my camera button. I'm going to click camera right there. You can probably see even from a distance that I'm looking at myself. I'm going to take myself a photo right there. So it took a photo of me. I'm going to click OK on that and then it's going to load my photo into my app really big. It only has my ear, <laughs> but I haven't uh, fully set that parameter, but there's a photo in my app. My humble website that I made last month now is becoming more like a real app. I can take a photo, do other stuff with it, but at least I'm learning the process here. Cordova, aka Taco, plugins to do different things, and then it's up to me to how I take that into a full-fledged app. So if it works, great. If not, let's take a break. Be back at 8.50. I'm going to put my code into the network folder at this point. We'll get people's help and then we'll uh, move on.